What's up guys, my name's Luke and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be creating some dynamic ropes using Cinema 4D soft bodies and we're going to have them collide with an object. So yeah, let's get straight into it. So we're going to start out by grabbing a circle spline over here and putting it inside of a tracer object. So with the circle selected, go into MoGraph, select tracer and the tracer will be referencing the circle over here. That's exactly what we want. Just a quick thing on the circle, maybe just change it to natural. On the tracer, we're going to change the tracing modes to connect all objects. And we're going to change the type to B-spline and the intermediate points to natural with a number of 10. Just so that it's nice and smooth. We're then going to take this tracer and put it inside of a sweep. So instead of putting the circle in the sweep like you usually would, we're going to put the tracer because the tracer is referencing the circle as, um, as the object over here. So anything that happens to the circle will happen to the tracer. So let's grab a inside now or circle, throw that in the sweep and maybe set a radius of like two centimeters. That looks good. Uh, you'll notice over here that there's a gap that it doesn't actually close. That's a quick fix. If you go into the tracer over here, you can just click close spline and the problem is solved. I just want to add some more segments onto here because you'll see it's kind of has these um, flat surfaces, which is not really what I want. But depending on what you want, you know, you can change it. So I'm going to set that to about 10 and that looks good. So now we're going to add a soft body onto the circle. So go to simulation tags and add in a soft body. So now if we press play, it should fall. Perfect. So let's grab a cylinder over here just as a collider object just so that we can test out how the, the simulation is working just so we can mess with some parameters. So we're going to add a simulation tag and a collider body on top of that. Press play and this is just going to be so we can test out the simulation over here because you'll notice that at the moment the simulation is kind of like it's a little too bouncy, it doesn't really, I don't know, feel like rope. So let's change that. So let's go into the soft body over here, go into the soft body settings, and let's change the shear and dampening to about two, and same with the flexion and dampening to about two. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. I say anywhere between two and five should be perfect. Uh, the next thing that we need to change is in the collision tag over here, you'll see there's this option over here to use and a margin so the margin that you're going to set over here is going to be the same radius that you set over here on your inside or circle whatever you're using to add the geometry onto the tracer so we set the radius as two so inside this margin we're going to set that to two so what that's doing is it's telling the computer how big the spline is so for instance if we had to set this to 10 and press play you'll see there's going to be a big gap over here because it's taking the radius of 10 centimeters so it's going to be a 5 centimeter difference over here so for us using 2 should be perfect um, maybe we could even set like 3 yeah that looks fine and maybe let's change the points over here to 10 yeah I think that looks a little bit better cool so that's the basics of the first setup so we're going to take this Put it into a null by going alt g and calling this rope or whatever you want to call it we're going to keep the cylinder here let's just make it a little bit thinner because what we're going to do with these cylinders is that we're going to use it to rotate the the rope and kind of pull it apart just so that it stretches so let's add a cylinder here and a cylinder down here just hold down control while moving and you can make a duplicate that is good Let's now add some keyframes, so on the H over here, and then at about, let's make it 180 frames, so that it's a nice 6 seconds. And for this one, let's set it to 180 degrees, and for this one, we're going to set it to negative 180 degrees. So now when we press play, it should turn and move it. That is perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. Cool. Now let's add another two cylinders. One 
one over here and one over here with some collider tags. You can just copy these over. And with these ones, we're gonna set a keyframe on the pitch. And over here, this one's gonna go to 180. And this one's gonna go to negative 180. Awesome. So let's duplicate this rope. So the nice thing about putting this rope into a null object is that now we can just duplicate this and we can make as many of these as we want. So that's exactly what we're wanting to do. Let's just change the rotation a bit of them just so that they're not the same. Just make sure that they're not intersecting with anything because that will cause some problems. So just kind of mess around till you get it that it's in between but not really intersecting anything. Cool. Let's take this rope again, rotate it 90 degrees this time and put it in between these two cylinders. That and... Like that should be good. Just make sure this isn't intersecting over here. And now let's add a few more of these. Now if we press play, cool. So we don't really need gravity in the scene. So we're gonna go to Control D, go to the Dynamics tag and set this gravity to zero. So now when we press play, they should float and all rotate. That is exactly what we're looking for. Cool, uh, I think I wanted these to rotate a little bit more. So I'm gonna set this to, which one is this? Is this gonna be? 360, negative 360, and same thing for the other, the other two. And let's see, that's exactly what we're looking for. Awesome. So don't really worry too much about these cylinders if you're thinking that they're gonna look ugly. We can very easily hide them, but still have them affected Awesome. Cool, so that's the basics of the first part of the setup. Now let's actually build our scene. So we're gonna use, I'm gonna use Quixel's Mega Scans um, and use their bridge to get us some assets. If you don't use Quixel Bridge, I would highly recommend it. I use it in a lot of my tutorials and it's just a really good free access to some really good 3D assets and um, scans. So for my render, I used a chair from Megascans. You can download the exact same chair that I used or you can use any other object. The principles should still say the same. And yeah, let's jump. Oh yes, one other thing. So you'll see that I just exported directly from here and now it's come in as a C, sorry, it's come in as a Cinema 4D default material which doesn't really help us because we're gonna be rendering with Octane. So to fix this, go into your render settings and change the render setting to Octane. Now when you export from Bridge, it will automatically change it to an Octane material. And now we have an Octane material. The one thing though is that when you're importing them, the metallic is always set to 100. Just turn that down and you should be fine. So now we're gonna add a simulation tag and add a collider body onto this object. We're now gonna go shift C and search for an attractor. Should put the attractor in the middle of the scene. Let's also uh, set the chair, put the axis in the middle and then just go PSR to reset the PSR over here. And we want the attractor to also be perfectly in the middle. Let's set the strength to about 400 and the speed limit to about 200. So now everything should be attracted to that central point. Let's see how that looks. That looks great. Let's just make the chair a tiny bit bigger. Awesome. And now we pretty much have the basics of this effect. 
let's see if we had to change this to a static mesh would that help with the uh, yeah i think that works a little bit better uh, so change the shape mode of the chair to static mesh and then it'll get you a little bit more of a realistic result so yeah uh one other thing i would add is a force modifier uh sorry not a force a simulation tags particles and friction modifier what this does is that it just adds some friction to the, the ropes over here so just imagine like a ball is rolling down a hill if there was no friction it's going to go super fast with a little bit of friction kind of imagine that it's like in viscosity or like water so it will hold it back a little bit so for instance if i set this really high press uh, kind of got shot away but it will act way slower compared to if i turn this off now it goes way faster. So yeah, hope that explains that. So I've just set that to about 10, just so it's not doing too much sliding up and down on the poles. So one last thing that you can do to give this a little bit more excitement is by adding a vibrate tag onto the chair over here and then just changing the rotation over here, maybe by 30 and maybe set this to like 0.5. So now this will rotate around maybe 0.1, it's a little bit, or 0.3, like that. So that now when it's interacting, it's dynamic and it's moving with the chair, which just adds a little bit more extra excitement to it. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you guys are interested, the project file is in my Patreon and the link in the description. And yeah, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments or ask me on Instagram. I'm sure the thing will pop up somewhere. But yeah, I hope you guys have a great day and I hope you learned something. Cheers.